Strippers in Los Angeles are trying to form America's only unionized strip club. Dancers at Star Garden started organizing with Strippers United after two workers were fired for voicing safety concerns about customers. If they succeed, they will be the first strip club to win union recognition since the 1990s, according to More Perfect Union. Let's take a look at what one of the lead organizers of the strike at Star Garden had to say. I became a stripper because if the world is set up in this way that I am going to be exploited from my femme body, I want control over that. I want to exploit the system that seeks to exploit me. If this is what we're given, we need to turn that around and make it work for us. I'm gonna unionize. Everyone's like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? Strippers organizing, they want a union, what's next? The world is ending and it's like, no, we're just like you. We're just people trying to work in a exploitative capitalist society. Joining us to discuss is founder of Strippers United, Antonia Crane, and Reagan, one of the lead organizers of the Star Garden Stripper Strike, and also producer and reporter at More Perfect Union, Libby Rainey. Thank you so much for joining us, all three of you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so uh, Reagan, I'll start with you. You know, what are the what were the the, the animating issues, the safety issues uh, that uh, caused you to take this action? Um, well, at this particular club, there were a lot of safety concerns that were popping up like red flags, and um, me and my coworkers would t talk about these issues in the dressing room and how they became more and more intolerable. Um, just an, an example is that uh, customers were filming us without our consent while we're on stage mm. topless and the security wasn't doing anything about it. Um, one of my coworkers intervened when a customer was in the middle of doing that and she was reprimanded and fired and nothing happened to this customer. And there were a lot of instances like that. I was fired for bringing up a safety concern about customers lingering after the bar closed. I saw it as a privacy issue, and I saw that there could be actual serious danger and harm done to dancers that are getting dressed, going to their cars. It's not unheard of for dancers to be targeted, assaulted, harassed, and stalked, and, um, and even worse. And so my concern was with my coworkers, and when I brought this up to the manager on duty, who was also the bartender that night, we got into an argument, and then I was fired. Um, and so th these are just some examples of issues at work that are important to us. Um, we're basically fighting for safety and unionizing seems to be the path forward because um, otherwise people don't listen to you. Libby, there hasn't been a strip club to win union rec recognition since the 1990s. Are there industry specific barriers that exist? I mean, honestly, I would throw that question to Antonia because Antonia was part of the uh, strip club, The Lusty Lady, their organizing effort in the 90s. And I think really the reason Strippers United, I mean, Antonia, we spoke about this on the picket line. Strippers United is an independent union. And it, the reason, one of the reasons it was formed, and Antonia, uh, I'd love to hear from you on this, it is because of the specifics of that industry. So yeah, I would, I would, I would turn that to her. Antonia? Hi, so yeah. Um, Strippers United was founded in 2018, and we haven't unionized since um, 1996. And stripping, you know, like like a lot of other skilled trades, like professional cheerleaders, athletes, other under-regulated industries, um, stripping is an industry that um, where workers are underrepresented and rules are under-implemented, and there are no safeties or protections in place. And the ones that are in place are not implemented and regulated. So um, what I'm talking about is an industry where dancers are often, well, they're exploited, um, robbed. Um, they are, they experience wage theft to a degree that is really not seen anywhere else. Um, and, you know, I've been choked on the shop floor. I have been uh, bitten, slapped. And these are just certain things that have happened also anti uh, anti-black hiring and firing policies. There's incredible blatant racism in the clubs. And until workers, strippers gather together and unionize the way that Reagan and the Star Garden dancers are doing right now, uplifting their voices and bonding together, um, these things will continue to get worse. And they have gotten worse over the decades. Mm. 
Is, and is there is a, that, that, true? that <laughs> sounds uh, especially the uh, the recording is something I hadn't occurred to me. I, I would think is that something clubs tend to uh, prohibit, but then then not enforce as aggressively as they should. Uh, Prohibit what? Unionizing, you mean? The uh, the recording uh, performers um, on your cell phone or something like that. Oh, Reagan, you can speak to that with the phones being rampant on the shop floor. Yeah, yeah. Um, We know that there are these sort of policies that are... um, that are just sort of verbally con- communicated. One of the one of the things that uh, the Star Garden dancers asked for in the petition that was delivered to the bosses on uh, March 18th um, was asking for um, the signed copies of our contracts, asking for um, a list of rules uh, that isn't just verbally communicated, so that you know we can be on the same page basically as our bosses as far as like what what is expected of us and also what is the protocol for the customers and when do we know when someone's breaking a rule and not so we we were told that recording is prohibited but then it's not being enforced and so something really unique um, at this club that i haven't experienced anywhere else and that really pushed us over the edge to want to organize is that the boss stood in the way of the dancers asking the security for help. So at most at most clubs, um, it's understood that the dancers are vulnerable and need the backup protection of the security guards. At this club, there was a barrier. The boss said, you're not allowed to ask the security guards to intervene. And they told the security guards that they're not allowed to interfere uh, with customers, that we had to go through the boss and get the boss's permission. Uh, and you'll have to um, you'll have to ask them why that uh, rule was implemented, because it makes absolutely no sense to me. And I think that a safe and protected workforce is a happy workforce and a workforce that is going to make you more money and making us feel unsafe and uh, and also untrusting um, is going to is going to absolutely backfire. And you're going to have unhappy workers and you're going to have a walkout and a protest and a picket. And now we're unionizing. So um, if if our industry was really willing to work with us, uh, we could get a lot more done um, on a faster timeline. But at this point, we are engaged in the process of unionizing because this is to my to my view that this is the path forward. Um, And it was it was, of course, laid uh the tracks were laid by antonia crane um and the lusty lady dancers in 1996 and so we look to them for inspiration i can't believe it's taken this long for it to happen again but i'm really excited to be a part of this new wave and and, antonia tell us a little bit more about uh, you know the history of that what what did the the collective action that was taken in in the 90s uh uh, produce because then it now it sounds like there's been a long uh, period in between of a of a lack of of organizing or, or a recognition of the organizing being done. Definitely. So I I'm in the school of like 1992 uprising of ACT UP, and we were constantly protesting in the streets. And the thing about being queer in the 90s and being a sex worker in the 90s is that the things that we did worked, and so we were able to enact change and experience those wins. And I think that's something specific to my particular vintage of organizers is that we experienced these small micro wins that made us get, gave us the confidence to keep going. And so when I was a live nude dancer at the Lusty Lady Peep Show um, in 1995, it was just an incredible group of these startlingly intelligent women and femme body dancers who uh, didn't want to be exploited and we were being recorded by people bringing in cameras. And there were other issues as well, because um, being a stripper, being a sex worker comes with a certain amount of shop floor turbulences. And I don't think that we are, um, we have a lot in common with other industries, but we also have some things that are really special and unique to our industry. And one of them is just physical vulnerability. Um, And so people were recording our images and that was the last straw Um, A 19-year-old dancer named Star walked out and said, I'm going to change things around here. And I got swept up in it. And it just, I never doubted. When we walked off, when she said, we're walking out right now, when um, a single mother was fired, uh, we all walked out. And there was no doubt. We just walked out together. And I remember one time on the picket line, also, um, a dancer looked at us when we were uh, picketing and said, should I work here? And we were like, I don't know. 
I guess. And she come, she walked in, got hired, and then walked straight out and joined the picket line. Hmm. So there was just this real sense of camaraderie, as well as when we were working nude in close contact, kind of like a barista, but a naked barista, if you will. Hmm. <laughs> Being in close quarters, we had daily contact with one another, and it really enabled these relationships to grow. And when your relationships grow, then workers are commiserating. And when workers are commiserating, then they can enact change. And that's what's happening right now. And um, the fact that um, we are employees, we've always been employees, and I want to make that clear. Troopers have always been employees. And um, under uh, the Trump administration, the NLRB ruling on July 31st, um, the NL, the NLRB um, ruled that a stripper is an employee giving her the right to unionize even when her employer incorrectly classifies her as an independent contractor. So regardless of these independent contractor um, contracts that strippers are being coerced into signing, um, strippers have always been employees. Um, and employees can unionize. And until the PRO Act passes, which will also enable other types of workers to unionize, this is where we are. So I'm really, really thrilled and elated to see this group of strippers coming forward and making their voices heard and insisting on dignity in the workplace and insisting on um, safety on the shop floor. It is long overdue, and I'm just glad that I'm here to see it. Well, Reagan, what are the next steps specifically? What are the hurdles that you're immediately confronting toward unionization? Um, right now in our campaign, uh, we are at the stage where we are formally asking our employer, uh, Star Garden, to uh, vo voluntarily recognize our union. We announced that we are unionizing with Strippers United. Um, so we are asking them to voluntarily recognize that. And then... Um, as things progress, uh, we have escalations up our sleeve. Um, we have a fantastic legal team that is just such a delight to be a part of. And um, I can't give anything away, but uh, it's going to be a very exciting fight and we are not going to back down and we will win. Do you think it's likely that they voluntarily recognize the union? What's the communication <laughs> with management been like so far? <laughs> um, I am, I'm such an optimistic person. I'm going to say, yeah, it's totally <laughs> likely that they're going to voluntarily recognize, but um, I would be lying. Uh, so um, we are going to have to fight them tooth and nail uh, for this. And luckily, we're completely well equipped to, to do so. And we're very confident. We have um, a great camaraderie with the group. We have a great, um, we have a great bond. And we have really committed to this fight and to this historical moment. Um, and even though we have bumps along the road, um, our struggle, I feel like now is, I see, I, see the, I see the larger problem in the larger conversation that when we talk about worker rights for strippers, we have to start the conversation at a place that is so, embarrassing to me because we have to start at a place where we have to convince people that we deserve it. Mm -hmm. And that is the heartbreaking part to me, that we have to convince the greater conversation in America and beyond to look at strippers as a workforce deserving of rights, deserving of safety, deserving of being in this conversation, deserving of having a union. Uh, I hate that we have to start there, but I guess we do. So mm -hmm. I'm here to say, and so is Ant 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 Antonia and Libby, that strippers do deserve these things. And um, if you don't think that they do, then I think that says more about you than it says about us. Yeah, Libby, is there an extra, you know, difficulty uh, in, in for workers in this specific industry in the and in, in, in need to overcome what I'm, I'm sure some people, you know, think or presume is, a, is the, 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 the work being not work or being exploitation by default and thus not surprising that that the workers are being exploited because because by by the nature that I'm not saying that's how I feel about it, but I'm sure that criticism is uh, is 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 leveled. No, th thanks for the question. I mean, it's something uh, we talked a lot. Like Reagan, we we spoke about that as we were filming the interviews, and I think it's. I mean, you know, I think for the media, yeah, to start with, you know, to start with just the basic, uh, the thing that should be obvious, which is that sex work is work and that these workers uh, deserve 
safety in their workplace, deserve to be heard by management, uh, deserve a union. And I think that, yes, uh, there is that additional layer of stigma, which all the dancers sort of shared with me uh, that they were they had experienced. Um, and I think that, you know, there this is where the media needs to play a role of turning the mic directly over to the dancers to say, what is your workplace like? And I think a lot of workers that maybe have preconceived notions about what stripping is in hearing from these dancers and in seeing the energy on the picket line would see there is so much that Strippers United and that the dancers in, at Star Garden have in common with so many other labor struggles that are happening right now. I mean, look, Reagan was fired for organizing. Something like 20 workers that have been organizing at Starbucks across the country have been fired in, retali like in retaliation. There is a Verizon worker that I interviewed who was fired for organizing. I mean, th this is you know a tactic being used by all types of bosses, um, including the managers at this strip club. I, I, then there's safety. I mean, you know, a couple of weeks ago, there was a walkout of Wendy's workers in North Carolina walking out because of sexual harassment and safety issues. And they have a lot in common with the dancers at Star Garden. And that's why solidarity is so important. So I think, yes, there's that additional hurdle. But actually, I mean, this is what this is what's so exciting about this moment. And I felt this on the picket line. I mean, the labor movement has everything to gain and everything to learn from, from this movement in particular. And I think that people that are paying attention to this struggle will see, um, maybe they, they thought they understood what, what it was like in a strip club. Uh, but, you know, actually, if you just listen to these workers, listen what they're fighting for, um, they are such an important and critical part of the broader labor movement that is happening right now in this labor upsurge. And when they win their union, I think it's going to be extremely exciting to see what happens at other strip clubs. Yes, well, I'm interested to see if there are any solidarity actions that we see out of this and if it will become part of this broader wave or uh, movement of strikes uh, and labor actions that's happening across the country. Thank you so much, Reagan, Antonia, and Libby for joining us today. Thank you so much. It was, a, it was really fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's been really great to meet you. Thank you all, and we will have more rising after this.